this initiative is part of what I call a much bigger picture of our seven year plan to rebuild the Department of Public Works, which includes the following objectives. We're trying to rebuild the technical and the professional capacity of public works in the state. We are trying to promote training and skills development in the built environment in line with the needs of the National Infrastructure Plan and the National Development Plan. And we are trying to transform the built environment professions to reflect the demographics of the country and in particular to, faci to facilitate access to the learners from the disadvantaged communities. We must look at this program as an incremental program, not just as isolated years, because we continue to support those. Some are at third year now, some are doing honors, some are doing masters. So we continue with those students. We don't just give them once off this 40. We have to take them through. So, I mean, the total number we're dealing with now, I think it's about 185. So we continue with those students. We look at their progress, like we are going to do with this. I firmly believe that we had had an adequate uh, complement of the professionals and technical staff. If we had had that, such as qualified project managers, quantity surveyors, and engineers, then we would have avoided most of the irregularities and the overspending that we have witnessed all too often in the past and which we have been talking about in the public works. As public works, we have a clear strategy or a clear and strategic long-term interest and commitment to technical and professional training in the built environment both to rebuild the professional capacity of the department and to contribute to the scarce skills which are required by the built environment generally. So the task, it's all the more urgent as the country embarks on a massive national infrastructure plan as part of our national development plan. So we need to remind ourselves that money spent on education of our children is not simply another expenditure and therefore a drain on the fiscus. Rather, it must be seen as an investment in the lives of the learners. It must be seen as an investment in the economy. And it must be seen as an investment in the future well-being of the society as a whole. Let us never forget the powerful words of our own Dr. Matiba. And I quote, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. We have made opportunities available for bursaries, internships, work experience, candidacy, as well as graduate placement for the built environment professions. All CETAs are expected to facilitate the delivery of, CETA, of center specific skills interventions that will help the country achieve the goals of NSDS 3, address employer demand, as well as deliver results. And it is in response to this specific call that the construction seat has allocated one, more than 1.2 billion rands in skills development in the last two years. This means that we have made the biggest allocation for skills development out of the 21 CETAs, whilst we are not the biggest CETA in terms of revenue income. In relation to bursaries, the construction center has allocated in the last financial year 110 million rands for bursaries. These were divided among quite a few entities. In the main, most of the funds went to public entities and the occasion that we are celebrating here today with public works where the CETA allocated 9,720,000 to the Department of Public Works for bursary alone whilst we've made an overall allocation of 50 million to the Department of Public Works for various skills interventions. We've also allocated 46,836,000 to NSFAS, 11 million to the Office of the Premier of the State, um, 6 million to the Northwest Office of the Premier, among others and a few others that we've also allocated to your public TV colleges your College of Cape Town, which received 4.8 million rands, 
um, your um, UKZN that had also received funding from the CETA for bursaries.